Hey, how's it guys? In this video, we're going to learn how to use Google Analytics for API in Python. All right, so Google has announced the next generation of Google Analytics, known as uh, GA4. And for the API, I'm going to uh, call that GA4 from now on. And there are actually uh, quite many steps that we need to uh, take to use the API. All right, so the first step is we're going to uh, create a service account. All right, so you want to go to console.cloud.google.com. And once you get to the uh, homepage or the dashboard, you want to click on the navigation menu and scroll down to APIs and services credentials. All right, so on the top, you want to create a new credential. And if you already have a service account, then you can skip this step. All right, so I'm going to uh, create a new service account. And I'll name my account. Let's do uh, GA4 underscore JJ. We can uh, give our account a description, or we can simply uh, create the account and continue. All right, so if you want to uh, choose a role to assign to this account, and since I'm the owner, I'm going to uh, choose basic, then owner. Continue. All right, so at this point, I have created my account, so I can click on down to finish the setup. Now under the service accounts, I want to uh, click on the GA4 account that I just created, which is uh, going to be this one here. All right, so on the right hand side, I believe that I need to click on Add a service account. Let me double check. Okay. All right. So let me go back. So choose the service account and click on this uh, pen icon to go into the uh, edit mode. All right. So on the top, want to click on keys. So want to create a credential or file that store our service account assets. All right. So here I'm going to click on add key. And I want to create a new set of key. And I'm going to set the key type as JSON uh, data type. Then click on create. Now we're going to uh, save the key in our local drive. And I already create a project folder for that. So it's not letting me to uh, navigate to my folder. All right, so let me do this. I'm going to uh, navigate to the folder. And for the file name, I'm going to name something that I can easily recognize. I'm going to call the file ga4 underscore service account. All right, so we have created the service account. We can now uh, navigate to our uh, Python environment. Now, before I dive into the uh, Python script, I want to cover a few things. All right, so uh, for this video, I'm going to do something easy. I'm going to show you how to uh, create records from the real-time report API endpoint. And there are a couple of limitations that I want to cover. So first, uh, the real-time report only has uh, records up to uh, the last 30 minutes. So the interval is going to be by per minute. And for the dimension, we can query uh, users by source, median, and campaign, uh, where your users are coming from. Actually, I don't think that's correct because I was able to uh, use different dimensions. So I guess uh, this is the only item that I want to uh, emphasize. The real-time report only covered the last uh, 30 minutes of uh, data. And as for the uh, dimensions that we can use, so you want to uh, go to the documentation uh, page. And on the reference, you want to go to types, then go to dimension. On the dimensions page, you should see all uh, the available dimension that uh, you can use. Actually, let me take a look. Actually, I don't think that's the uh, page. Okay, so I took that back. Uh, you want to go to guides. Under fundamentals, you want to click on API dimensions and matrices. And on this page, uh, here's the list of all the available dimensions and matrix that you can use to create your report. 
So before we can use Google Analytics for API, we need to enable the service first. All right, so here we need to uh, go to console.cloud.google.com, then click on navigation menu, APIs and services, then click on library. Now search for Google Analytics Data API, and here have a typo. It should be the uh, first item from the result. Now click on Google Analytics Data API. <clears throat> and just make sure that you enable the service. Oh, and the other thing that I want to cover. So I created a module. And I named the file ga4.py. And here's the uh, source code that you can download. And I said I eventually uh, put the source code on GitHub. But for now, I'm still doing the testing, so I'm going to uh, post the uh, source code on my website. All right, so here, uh, let's go into my project folder. And one more thing. So before you can use the GA4 file, you want to create a folder and name the folder GA4. Inside the uh, folder, you want to uh, save the source code as GA4.py. Then you want to create a init file. And we open uh, this file. So inside this file, basically you just want to uh, insert this statement here. Okay, let me increase the uh, font size. So basically you want to type from da, and that means that you want to reference the uh, GA4 folder. And within the GA4 folder, you want to uh, reference GA4.py file. And from the file, we want to import the GA4 real time report class. All right, so let me uh, go back. And the GA4.py file is basically uh, the same source code as uh, this one here. All right, so here let me go ahead and uh, create a new Python script. And I'll name the uh, script. Let me go back to the top. And I'll name the file demo.py. Right, so from the top, I'm going to import the OS module. And the reason why I wrote the uh, GA4 module is because uh, when I was working with uh, GA4's API and there were way too many moving pieces, I just want to uh, create a class to simplify the operation. All right, so here I'm going to import the GA4 real time class. I'm going to type from GA4 import followed by the class name GA4 real time report. And because GA4 API use a service account to uh, authenticate your uh, account access, so here we need to uh, set the environment variable using the OS module. And the variable name needs to be Google underscore application underscore credentials is equals to the uh, file path. Now let me go back to the top. Right, so here's the uh, service account file. And here I'm going to uh, grab the file path. And I'm going to assume that you already have your uh, property ID available. So here I'm going to create a variable called property ID. And for my website, uh, it's going to be 307-310-528. Right, so here let's go back to uh, the list of dimensions and metrics. All right, so let's say I want to create my report based on city. Actually, let's, let's not do city, let's do uh, country. Country and let's do one more. Uh, let's do a uh, device model. So uh, those two uh, categories. I'll create a list called uh, LST underscore dimensions. So here we can uh, insert as many uh, dimensions as we want, but just be aware of the uh, records limit 
is a hundred thousand rows for the real time report. Right, so here I'm going to insert my dimensions. And this one's going to be country and device model. Now for the matrix, I'll name the variable LST underscore matrix. And for that, let's see, let's use Right, so let's use something that uh, is popular among the users. Right, so let's use an uh, active users. Now we have all the uh, variables uh, prepared. Now we can make the API call. Right, so let me go ahead and run this code block first. I want to uh, make sure that everything's running smoothly at this point. Right, so here I'm going to create instance of the uh, GA4 real time report object. And I'll name the object GA4. So if you have multiple uh, websites or properties, then you can create multiple uh, objects that are linked to uh, different properties. So that's one of the beauties using uh, API that you can run it against uh, multiple websites or uh, properties at the same time. Right, so this is going to be a uh, real time report. And for the uh, class or uh, the instance to access the property, we need to provide the property ID. Right, so here we can uh, create the report, the real time report. And I'll name the output's uh, response. Right, so from GA4, actually, let me name this to uh, GA4 underscore real time. And so far, there's only one method that we can use. And the method is called query report. All right, so inside this query, we have, let's see. Here, let's go to the uh, source code. All right, so if we look at the uh, query report method, so this function takes two uh, required parameters dimensions and metrics. And we have two uh, optional parameters. One is the uh, row element, meaning that how many rows you want to return per API call. And you want to uh, return the quota user's information. All right, so for this, I'm going to pass this dimension and this matrix as the uh, required arguments. And for the row element, I'm going to return just the first 10 rows. And for the uh, quota usage, I'm going to return two, just to show you uh, what the output looks like. Now I'm going to uh, run uh, these four lines to create the report. So here I'm getting a, a 403 error. Uh, the user does not have sufficient permission for this property. And since I have experienced uh, this error before, uh, this is not the first time. All right, so to uh, resolve this issue, you want to navigate to analytics.google.com. And here, let me increase the zoom. From the home page, you want to go to admin. Now, choose the property. And here, I'm selecting my uh, GA4 property. On the left hand side, I want to click on account access management. Now let me go back to my accounts list. All right, so I want to grab uh, the email address assigned to the service account that was created. And for the uh, GA4 underscore JJ, and here's the email assigned to uh, this account. I want to copy the email address. I want to click on add new user. And we'll simply uh, paste the email address to give uh, this user, in this case will be the uh, service account, access to uh, connect to uh, the property. All right, so I'm going to uh, turn off notification here. And here you can uh, choose the role that you want to assign to the user. And I'm going to uh, choose uh, viewers. 
since I only want to give uh, that account uh, view access and click on add to add the user. All right, so let's go back. Now this time if I rerun the uh, query, All right, so here I'm getting a different error message. Device model is not a valid dimension. Oh, I know why, because uh, device model is not one of the uh, available dimensions for the real-time report. All right, so here uh, let me use device category. But I want to uh, run this query again. Let me take a look. Oops. Device model in country. Okay, so let me change device model to device category. Now on to uh, rerun this code block. All right, so this time uh, I'm not getting any error message. Now if I print the response object, and it's going to return, let's see, uh, here's the quota inflation. So today I've used uh, three quota. So that gives me uh, 24,997 quota remaining. And for the quota per hour, uh, for every hour, I still can make up to 5,000 uh, request calls. And here's the uh, report inflation. Now if I want to grab the header, so uh, the response object is basically a dictionary. If I print the keys, we have three keys, quota, headers, and rows. So headers is going to return the headers. And rows is going to return the uh, counting itself. Now one thing I like to do here is I like to uh, import pandas module and to uh, translate the information into a table uh, format. So from pd.dataframe, we can pass uh, rows to the uh, data parameter. And for the counts, uh, this is going to be response headers. Oh, and here I'll print the df object. All right, so here we uh, terminate this session, and I'll simply run the script from scratch. All right, so here I made a typo. This should be rows. I'm new run again. All right, so this time it's going to return my data frame object as a uh, two-dimensional table. And here we have the country, device, category, and the active users count. So this is going to be everything we're going to cover in this video. Just an introduction video to get you to start using uh, Google Analytics for API. And if we go back to the documentation, so there's another uh, method here. Let me take a look. And there are other couple methods uh, such as run report method, run pivot table report, get meta data, and batch report, and so on. And I'll cover those methods in a separate video. But for now, this is going to be everything I'm going to cover. And if you found this video useful, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.